a quick look at my extended Rook 180 build where I've taken the standard Rook 180, extended it by 10 centimeters in the Y to add a hold area for three separate hot ends at the rear. To achieve the swapping capability, I've had to rotate the hot end by 180 degrees and split the hot end so that it's held on by magnets and some keys to ensure positioning. The only other change needed for this was to move the bed back by a couple of centimeters to ensure the hot end was still centered to give me full bed coverage. You can see here I have a single direct drive hot end and I've allowed for two Bowden tube hot ends uh, to the left and right of this. In my actual final design, I've replaced these two simple Bowden extruders with some side mounted uh, M8 Voron style extruder. If I isolate the uh, rear hot end stor storage area, you can see what's been added to actually hold the three hot ends when they're not in use. This unit fits between the two rear posts by the screws that were already holding the rods in place. Each of the three units is identical, although you can see from this right unit, I have the ability to move the units forward to accommodate uh, different depths caused by the direct drive extruder having uh, a protruding uh, motor. Zooming in on this, you can see that these green uh, prongs hold the hot ends in place, whilst these two red uh, side grippers ensure it doesn't slap, slip off when it is being retained at the rear. This gray pull down bar, when moved up and down, opens these red grippers to allow the hot head to be detached when it's being rejoined. You can see it in position attached. Here's the Rook 180 tool head assembly in a little more detail. This is almost identical to the standard Rook 180 tool end. However, I have had to extend the here blue center section by about four millimeters to give me additional space for magnets to fit. Not forgetting that now the hot end is rotated, this is to the front of the printer with the fan and the actual hot end and fan are mounted to the rear. On the left side here, you can see a gray bar with indents in it. This currently is a work in progress. As you can see the numbers on the side, the position of the indents is going to be used to identify which hot end is currently fitted. And by moving the hot end to the very left, I'm going to mount a small micro switch, which will be able to identify which of the hot ends is mounted, and also possibly detect any incorrect mounting where the hot end is either too far forward or too far back. Although the magnets generally guarantee that the position is correct. Looking to this side of the hot end, we have this item here, which I call the push off bar. It will be clearer to see. At the moment, you can see the push off bar in both the extended and retracted positions. If we only have one of these visible, you'll see the 
difference when the bar is pulled forward. So here it is in the normal position when the tool head is connected. And you can see here, this plane is flat to the head. Therefore, the head is correctly mounted. The whole reason for having this push-off bar is to ensure when the hot end is being removed, there's a small gap broke to break apart the, the magnets. This ensures that the gantry has enough pulling power to separate the hot end. Here we can see the push-off bar in the separated position. So it's been rotated. And now there's a protrudence in the middle separating the hot end. The idea being, as the hot end moves forward, this push-off bar will be pushed into this position, breaking the magnet. When it is retracted, it will pull back and the magnets will tightly snap together. Switching back to the full view, you can see here this blue bar, which is positioned to catch the push-off bar as the hot end moves forward. So this top section pushes the bar back, causing the magnets to break away. Then as the hot end is retracted, this hook hooks on the push-off bar, rotating it and making the magnets click together. So on occasion, the hot end, if it was incorrectly moved to the rear of the bed, could catch the hook as it pushed forward. To stop this happening, the hook has been designed in two separate parts, which can slide together. The hook itself, if pushed, will slide on this mechanism. And a spring attached with a small screw in these two holes will ensure that it springs back into place once the hot end is retracted. Going back to the direct drive tool head, you can see here uh, in orange, the actual hot head itself, which detaches, hiding the hardware around it. You can see at the rear the position of the magnets and also these three pyramids which help align the unit as it snaps together. I've designed this in actually two separate bodies. It would normally be printed as a single unit, but the bodies themselves, the rear part of the tool head, is actually separate to allow me to design other suitable tool heads. I can just take this back plane and then extend it with whatever design of tool head I want. At the moment, I've only got two tool heads designed. I've got the one we've just been looking at and one for a bamboo hot end. I've gone for the bamboo hot end because uh, in other printers I've built, it's worked really well and it's relatively cheap and we certainly know from the bamboo speeds that it's going to have no problem with performance. So this hot end here is a very simple hot end just with the bamboo hot end in place. I use the bamboo hot end fan which actually fastens onto the front of this hot end. All the cabling on all the tool heads route through this small gap on the front left. 
and by inserting a small piece of filament through this angled hole or a 2.5 mil screw head, it can, I can hold the cables in place. So that just about concludes uh, the changes made so far to the 180 to get multiple high ends working. Still a work in progress, but uh, I certainly feel like I'm getting a lot closer. As you can see from this video, uh, I've started to get things printing uh, and I've tested both my hot end designs and they're both working at this point.